Welcome to the Triathlon Nutrition Academy podcast, the show designed to serve you up evidence-based sports nutrition advice from the experts. Hi, I'm your host, Taryn, accredited practicing dietitian, advanced sports dietitian, and founder of Dietitian Approved. Listen as I break down the latest evidence to give you practical, easy to digest strategies to train hard, recover faster, and perform at your best. You have so much potential, and I want to help you unlock that with the power of nutrition. Let's get into it. Joining me in this episode is one of our legend academy athletes, Lee Yong. And Lee is a triathlete based in Victoria, Australia. She works as a clinical physiotherapist. So if you are watching the video, you'll see her beautiful clinical background. <laughs> But she has just had a cracking race season and I wanted to get her on to chat all about that and see if she's got some secret insights about what made her season so successful. So welcome, Lee. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Now, before we get into why you're so awesome, can you give us a little bit of a rundown about how you found this crazy sport of triathlon? I started with what? is a mini triathlon here in Barron Heads that my friend wanted to do. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll come along with you. Sounds like fun. And I really enjoyed it. So after going to some of the free clinics of one of the triathlon clubs that they ran before the event, I continued with them afterwards in their group sessions. And that all started from there. So you've been doing triathlon for, what, five-ish years now? Five-ish years, yes. What sort of distances have you tackled in that time? I started with all the short races. Um, the two times you ones in Melbourne were the ones that I started off with. And like in triathlon, everyone gives you crazy goals. So what's the next thing you do? I tried a 70.3, half Ironman. And then after that, I had two other friends that said, I want to do a nine man. And it was never on my radar. But again, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that with you. And then COVID hit. So we signed up in 2019. Obviously, 2020, it didn't go ahead. 2021, there were floods in Port Macquarie, so it didn't go ahead. We changed to Cairns. We got locked out with the lockdowns. It didn't go ahead. So finally in 2022, it took three years. Crazy. They both had had two kids by then. Neither of them did it with me. And I was the chump that was stuck <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that I trained for three years for, but oh my goodness, last year, yeah. So I took that one off the bucket list item. I didn't know I had, but now I feel like I've done that. And what I realized, what I actually enjoyed doing, was the short course triathlons that didn't take over my weekends in my life. So yeah, particularly training for an Ironman for three years in a row, like that's just silliness. Unfortunately, that happened for a lot of people as well. So do you think you were super fit for that Ironman or did you just lose motivation by that point? Yeah, that's true. I think I was probably much, much better prepared for that Ironman than I would have been if I had to have done it in the first year. It gave me a really good opportunity to build a good endurance base over three years and I was really excited to just get it done. Yeah, so some positives to that, a three-year journey to get to Ironman. There's, you know, some good things that come out of that. But this season, you've really decided to step it back and focus on the sprint and Olympic distance events. Is that just because you were over it or do you think that you're better suited to that? Probably both. Like if I never have to see a four, five, six hour ride again, I would be very happy. <laughs> I was really ready to have a break from the long, slow endurance stuff. And having you now done a season of sprint and Olympic training, I really enjoyed it. And it was just like a new goal and a new exciting thing to try and get faster rather than, you know, last long. Yeah, a nice little switch and coming to that from an endurance base is, again, probably not a bad thing either. So you've just completed five of the six two times you try series down in Victoria and you actually came fourth overall in that series in your age group with three fifth places and two third place podiums. So congratulations. Thank you. That's very exciting. Yeah, you're on fire. Yeah, I was really happy with my TVs that I was getting, actually. The times were getting faster, which is what I'm so used to looking at because, you know, until, yeah, last season I did manage to get a few podiums, but I've never before thought about where am I in a race 
I've always just watched how my tires are looking. So it's almost a bit of a switch too, to start thinking about racing on top of other people instead of just me. But Yeah. Yeah. Like competing rather than completing. Yeah. And what do you think was the reason that you were so successful this season? I think there were a lot of things. I think even before signing up for the Nutrition Academy, which I think had a big part of how I was feeling, how I was performing, training, racing, I also did a good bike block in the winter leading up to it. And then I managed to do a consistent one-a-week strength session, which I'd never really done before, which helped with a lot of my running. So I'd had some bike fitness and some run strength. And then on top of that, I learned how to recover well. I learned how to fuel for my training, which just had me feeling good energy-wise. And it just sort of opened up how much I can push myself. I think there were a lot of things that just sort of came together for the season. Yeah, amazing. Everything kind of slotted into place for you nicely. Yeah, it's very good. (laughs) And so what sort of training did you do differently this time that was maybe different to the past? Well, I think my coach gave me some long, hard rides on my days off, not just in the weekend. So I definitely felt better and stronger on the bike. And a lot of the things that I was trying to do with my running, I think I realized I really didn't have the strength to do until I gave myself that long period to actually build it up. And then because I've always had an Ironman at the you know end of the season, the two XU races sometimes were the small races that I didn't really have to worry about or I wouldn't take before. But to actually focus on speed work this season or, you know, shorter runs and not having to work on the endurance side of things as well, I think it was a lot more specific. Mm, dial up that speed and turn down that big diesel engine a little bit. Yeah. And what did you do specifically in the gym? Like you're a physio, you know better, right? But, you know, sometimes you just need to be told what to do. I know. I definitely went and saw another physio to tell me what to do. (laughs) Absolutely. It was really great. So he sort of set me up for a program, which I I actually continued. It's terrible. I know this as a physio, but it was the same program for, I think I've been doing it for about eight months. And I still get DOMS for two or three days after it. So I haven't changed it myself because it's still working. But I've noticed like I could got more range or more stability or better technique in doing the same exercises despite not actually having changed the weights or progressed it like I know I probably should have. But it's actually, it's still working well for me. Yeah, cool. And did you do that through your Ironman build or is it something that you've laid in for this season? Yes, yeah, so I, I think I came to see him about six weeks before my Ironman and said, I think I need to do some strength things. <laughs> <laughs> I know as a physio, not great, but I don't know that I had many of the improvements for my Ironman, but it's definitely a good base for this season. No time like the present, right? It's never too late to get in the gym. <laughs> like a bit of deadline pressure, yeah. <laughs> and so over the last six months or so, you've been working more so on your nutrition. It's not something you've ever tackled before. What are the sort of things that changed for you through this season with a bit more knowledge? Like I never would have eaten in the right recovery window after a training session. Like I would often like most social triathletes would go to the cafe a little bit later. It's nothing that actually I now know that I need or not in a timely window. So I think that even there's just that recovery was such a big change for me and I was one of those people that would be in bed napping for the afternoon after a morning session in the weekend and feeling really tired. So just yeah, learning how to refuel, learning how to eat day to day has been a really big part of what I think's paid off as well. Like learning how to change what I'm eating each day, depending on what the training is, instead of what I was probably doing before was which a whole lot of restricted eating and then a whole lot of binging, which just then went in terrible cycles from diet culture growing up. It was, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that, feeling tired, feeling hungry, and then eating probably more and worse later. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Particularly working in a hospital, I've had the experience of a lot of crap food being around all the time. Like there's chocolates on the wards. There's biscuits everywhere. There's always food. Yes. And I used to always say, you know, free food gods will not bring me food if I don't eat it. So I must take their offerings. 
<laughs> so definitely still indulge sometimes, but I'm not craving it as much as I used to because I, I am eating better at other times. Yeah, I find that hospital environment so hard. You've got to be so strong and have really good willpower constantly or eat that type of thing strategically because you're honestly faced with it 24-7. It never goes away. No, and it's Easter, so it's particularly bad at the moment. Oh, yes, yeah, true. So many Easter eggs. Yeah, crazy. So you understand how to eat differently on a day-to-day basis and you've got a like relatively physical job, right? You don't get to sit down all day in a clinic. You're like up on the wards, helping patients, walking around constantly. Couple that with training for three sports in a week. You're not exactly sedentary. So what sort of specific things other than that recovery meal, getting that right and getting the timing, what sort of other things have you changed or implemented in your days to make you feel better? I think I'm definitely better at having a breakfast meal, which is usually a solid meal because it's my recovery meal because I prefer to do my training in the morning, which I wasn't always having before. And just a lot of the uncertainty and the mental work of trying to work out what to eat and when I don't have to worry about it anymore because I know and it's easy for me to adapt. So it's actually taken a lot of that energy side thing out of it. And I've sort of worked out the things that work for me, like, you know, with Run Club, I'm not getting home in time to have my recovery meal. So I'm taking my protein hit straight away with those smoothies, which I am a big fan of. Yeah, things like we can have two pieces of bread in my recovery meal rather than one. You know, if I actually need the protein, I'll have three eggs, not, you know, one or two. Like it's good to know how to fuel properly for your training rather than worrying about what am I eating for how I look or, you know, it's a different way to think about things. Yeah, that's crazy. It is so different, isn't it? And it is a little bit of a mental switch around fueling for performance rather than eating to like eat in a way. You have to actually survive your training and recover to back up and go again, which is a totally different way of eating compared to coming from a restriction dieting mentality So many females eat one piece of toast and one egg and they're like, yep, breakfast done, I'm sorted. And then you wonder why you're starving a couple of hours later. I know. I've had this thought that if my body doesn't get enough fuel, it will improve through adversity. Looking back now, silly, obviously, because it does feel so much better when I'm fueling properly when I train and I am performing so much better for this too. But it's still a learning curve because even... You know, an off season, I said to my coach the other day, oh, off season is probably when I can drop more weight now because I don't need to worry about fueling as as well because I'm not in my peak season anymore. And he was like, Lee, you, you're performing well. You're feeling good. I'm like, why would you change what you're doing? You were already laid up. And I was like, yeah, actually, that's true. I didn't think about that. But that's just what I gone back to how I should look because, you know, triathlon was in life crowd, but. It's a different thought process, which I'm still learning, but yeah. Oh, your coach sounds awesome. It's rare to hear coaches have that side of, you know, the nutrition thing a bit more balanced, which is really good. Like I would hear a lot of coaches be like, yep, let's put you on like light and easy or a 1200 calorie diet now. Let's do this. Like so good and so refreshing to hear a coach being like, don't mess with a good thing. And what did that equate to? In minutes, like what are your PBs? What sort of ranges are you talking about there? Well, I know in the world of runners and triathletes, it's still very slow, but I've never been a runner. Stop it. Stop it. I've always wanted to get under 50 minutes for my 10K run. I've always just wanted to get under 5K things and I'd never, ever achieved it. And I finally did in my final Olympic race in St. Kilda. I think I got gypped because the official time says 02, but I definitely know it was a longer (laughs) to be 10K call. And I'm pretty sure I ran a faster pace in that 10K than I did at the 5K in that same spot a few races back. So, wow. Like, really happy. That was, yeah, my other goals were trying to get under that 5K pace for the fives. And I did that for every single race this season instead of like a once off. And that's coming off on top of my bike PB, which I took a couple of minutes off my bike time from Noosa, which was my previous PB. So, to have like a really strong bike and take some time off that and then also have you know a two minute pb for my 10k run it was just 
really exciting. <laughs> oh, so good. So stoked yeah. for you. You just seem to get better and better as the season went on as well. Like every race, I was like, holy crap, like Lee is literally on fire. Every time you raced, it was another like podium or getting faster and you look like you have fun doing it too. Maybe not out of the swim exit. Yes, it's funny because my husband who comes to watch sometimes says that I'm no longer smiling and waving at him. He's like, you've got like this either dead grimace on your face you're working harder and he's like, you can see that you'd be racing rather than, you know, just having a good time, which is quite exciting too. Yeah. So good. And is there anything that you do differently? Yeah, there were obviously a few tweaks that I will try out this off season again and then see what works for me in, in racing season. I've never raced with caffeine before. And so by the time we did the caffeine talk, I was like, oh, I'm not too sure if I want to try this because I've also only just started drinking coffee not long ago so I didn't know I think there's something I will try in off season to see how it goes and I think I'll try a different nutrition brand after learning about multiple transportation carbs I've realized that my one with 70 grams of glucose may not be completely working through for me so I might try a few different things as well but overall like it's all sort of starting to fall into place and it's all making more sense. Oh so good to hear if if people like what is she talking about with the multiple transportable carbohydrate thing and 70 grams of glucose don't worry (laughs) it's something we dive deep into inside the academy program Lee's taking it up like to the advanced level so if that makes no sense to you don't stress. I can teach you all the things. So what's the plan for next season then? Are you going to stay short? Do you want to try doing a 70.3 again? What's the big picture plans for Lee Young? I feel like I enjoyed that season so much. I will probably do the same and try and go faster again. I really didn't enjoy my 70.3. Well, I did three of them. I did hate every one of them. And I think, actually, I did think about it. It may be different now that I have nutrition as a, as a better tool. So it may be a different story now. But you're a swimmer, right? Like me, like swimming is our strength and running is our weakness. And running 21.1 kilometres as a swimmer is a long way. It was not fun every time. It was not fun. <laughs> I feel more like you have to run that distance. Like for the Ironman, I would run 2K and then have snacks and walk and then run 2K and have more snacks and walk and it was the best day. It's a long day, but yes. Yes, it was, it was. But to complete it, it was a very enjoyable day rather than racing it. But I think at a 70.3 distance, you would still be trying to race it. And I don't know, half marathon just really doesn't sound that appealing to me when I enjoyed the season so much. So I'd probably just stick to very similar sprints and Olympics and enjoy my summer, enjoy my social life too. Yeah, understand what that is. Again, when you don't do Ironman training, you can have a social life and you can spend time with your husband and do extracurricular activities outside of triathlon and work. Exactly. Triathlon is such a great enjoyable part of my life it's not everything though so when it starts affecting relationships or what I can and can't say yes to and social friend family catch-ups and it's not really what I want out of it yeah it's a nice balanced way to think about it well I look forward to seeing what next season has in store for you then Lee make sure you do a nice good ride block and then a strength block in the gym heading into next season repeat that because that worked yes So I might have to go back and see that physio again. (laughs) (laughs) And lots of things to work on with your nutrition. I feel like you're just getting started, which is really exciting. Really exciting stuff. I really, yeah, I do appreciate help and the knowledge of what to do and how to look after it yourself and work it out for yourself too. It's so different from wondering, you know, am I eating the right things at the right times? Have I got enough nutrition for this bike ride? Am I going to bonk? Because I've hit the wall many times and it's so nice to have the confidence to know that this is the right stuff, evidence-based. It's been really helpful for me, so I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I think that's really invaluable that you understand why we do the things and you understand the evidence behind it and then you can apply that to yourself because it means that you don't have to 
you know, come and see me for a new plan for next season. Like you know how to tweak and evolve what you did this season for next season and, and only kind of get better and faster as a result of that. Like same as going to see the physio for a new plan. I was going to say in theory you could write your own plan, but maybe as a clinical physio, maybe you can't. Probably <laughs> not. Mine, I think I sailed my muscular placement the first time around. I had to reset the six weeks. So <laughs> I was like, I'll look after you after you had your open bypass or your <laughs> abdominal surgery or something, but maybe you have. Yeah, area of expertise. Same as me, like I'm a triathlon dietitian. If you came to see me for a physique sport like body sculpting or making weight with boxing or like a rugby league player, I'd be like, nah, I don't know, go to someone else. Like I know, but not enough. And you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm not going to half ass a plan that I'm winging. I'd rather just get it right for somebody the first time. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. So we sneakily have doors open to the Academy program at the moment. They're going to close again Sunday morning. And it's really just because I've been borderline harassed by so many people to come inside the program since we opened in January. They don't officially open until July. That's our next big open week. But if you are one of those people that has been kicking themselves because you missed out in January, then go to dietitianapproved.com forward slash academy and you'll be able to kind of go in the sneaky side door. But that locks down Sunday, 9am Brisbane time, which is Saturday afternoon or evening if you are in the US or Canada. And I'm not opening them again for anyone. There's no more harassment. (laughs) (laughs) They'll officially open again in July if you miss this one. So dietitianimproved.com forward slash academy if you want to come inside and, you know, get some sick performance gains like Lee's experienced this season. She has been amazing. All the other academy athletes have been cheering you on, Lee, being like, you need to get Lee on the podcast. (laughs) She's doing so awesome. (laughs) So here you are. Thank you so much for sharing some of your secrets around what you did. Probably don't recommend doing three years of Ironman training to have a good successful sprint season, but there are plenty other good takeaways from that that you can implement to feel some of that success that Lee has as well. Thanks, Taryn. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Triathlon Nutrition Academy podcast. I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or want to share with me what you've learnt, email me at podcast at dietitianapproved.com. You can also spread the word by leaving me a review and taking a screenshot of you listening to the show. Don't forget to tag me on social media at dietitian.approved so I can give you a shout out too. If you want to learn more about what we do, head to dietitianapproved.com. And if you want to learn more about the Triathlon Nutrition Academy program, head to dietitianapproved.com forward slash academy. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to helping you smash it in the fourth leg. Nutrition!